Hello, my name is Fabian and I have built this little 5-axis CNC mill for my office. So we are here in the first floor of an apartment flat um, and this has decided many of the design decisions for this machine, uh, mainly making it uh, as thin as it is. Maybe a short disclaimer up front. I have no professional background in engineering or in CNC machining. Uh, so everything I do here is only hobby. And for this, don't take this as an how to build a machine, but more like what I did. The design is based roughly on a Hermler C400, scaled down by a factor of 2.5. The machine has a 330 millimeter travel in X, 340 usable for machining in Y and a total of 560 for the tool change in Y and 450 millimeters in Z. The A axis tilts 180 degrees and the C axis can spin freely. There are 20 millimeter ball screws and linear rails with 750 watts AC servos and 1 micrometer resolution glass scales in all linear axes and harmonic drives in the two rotary axes. The tilting table is 500 mm in length and the mounted rotary table is 260 mm in diameter. The spindle is a German Jäger Z100 ATC spindle. It uses a HSK 32E tooling and can spin up to 40,000 RPM and is rated for 5.5 kW continuous and 12 kW short term. It was important to keep the footprint small enough to fit in this free spot in my office at home. Overall dimensions are 1.3 by 1 by 2.2 meters. Total weight will be around 400 kilogram. The height of the table was chosen so the electrical cabinets and water cooler fit underneath and it is comfortable to work on the milling table. Chips can simply fall through this opening in a bin underneath the machine. Not sure if I should show the electrical cabinet. Again, the disclaimer, I'm no professional and please don't use this as an example for anything. The machine runs on 400 volts, 60 amps, three phase power. Local laws concerning electrical work may vary. The cabinet is not finished yet. I just plugged everything together for now. Here you can see the five servo drives for the 750 watts AC servos, the variable frequency drive for the spindle, and the two servo stars which power the harmonic drives. I have put all the 400 volt components in one electrical cabinet. The 24 volt control logic is in a separate cabinet, mainly because of space. I also hope to minimize interference this way. For the control I use Linux CNC together with two MISA cards. Most parts are made using an epoxy granite sandwiched between 3mm aluminium plates, which mainly served as the casting form. That is also the reason for the many M5 holes in the frame. The sheets were bolted together here and they now serve as mounting points for example for the energy chains. The holes are blind holes from both sides, so coolant will not leak through them. The tilting table is also filled with epoxy, but its frame is made out of 10 mm thick steel and 40 mm cast iron welded to the sides. All of the cables of the fifth axis harmonic drive will be routed through the table and exit to the left in the final assembly. Only for this first assembly test they just dangle around. The holes in the gantry serve several purposes. They were required to bolt the part down during machining and they are needed to reach some screws for the assembly of the thread axis. I don't know yet what the final usable speed of the machine will be. There's still a lot of servo tuning and so on to be done. The rotary axis can both turn with 40 RPM. This here is closer to 10 for the fifth axis and I have reduced the speed for the fourth axis quite a bit for now because the floor is shaking a bit when the heavy table tilts fast and this scared me. So until now all five axes and the servo for the tool changer are working. 
also the probe is already working. Next steps should be to disassemble the machine again and fix some minor issues I found. For example, I need to do a little bit more of scraping on the y-axis. Here also the whole pattern for the left linear rail is not fitting. The frame is too big for my mill to work on it after the casting process, so I drilled the holes in the stock up front and hoped it would not move as much as it did. But I kind of expected this. This is not a problem. I can simply drill new holes next to the existing ones because I ordered the rails long enough so I could compensate for this to happen. I also might redesign the x-axis glass scale reed head mounting. I know clearance is clearance, but maybe don't risk it. Also, the z-axis ball screw bearing is for some reason colliding with the gantry. So here we have a negative clearance situation, but this is an easy fix. I'll just grind a little bit of the casting away to get the full z-axis travel back. I also need to get the flange for the fourth axis harmonic drive aligned. Uh, I will explain this in a future video. If you do have any questions, let me know in the comments and thanks for watching.